Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Um, taking some time to hang out with us, we appreciate it. Rob from Cigar Federation here with you. I usually say as always, but I feel like I haven't done the show in months, even though it's really only been... I know. It hasn't been that long. But you and I, Logan, we have not done a show together in a minute. I mean, it has been a hot minute. And you know, there was baseball in September, and then I was you traveling were, for three weeks. Yeah, in October you were on the road, and then one week I said, oh, "Screw Rob." Yeah, that was what I did last week. That's kind of what you did last week. Yeah, I just said, the, "You know, Seth can do it. That's fine." Um, but no, it's been a while, man. It's good to see it. Yeah, man. Your hair's getting long. Hey, I'm trying to be like Mike, man. <laughs> I'm ready to cut mine. I'm telling you. I'm really? Oh, it's it's. I mean, look at look at all that. That's but you're doing it for locks of love, man. I, that's, I, I, that's that's some excess. That's, that's a lot of. I, I've man, I'm getting too good at putting my hair in ponytails. It's uh, I'm just not used to it. I've never had long hair before. And for the third um, gayest thing ever said on the that, show goes to Rob. I've, I've never been uh, never. See, Robert, Robert's got the Robert's got long hair, but it works for you, man. That's Those a good look, baby. <laughs> that's a good look for you. It, it, for me, it's 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 kind of off for me. Um, Guys, our, our guest tonight is Robert from uh, Southern Draw Cigars. Robert, thanks for taking the time, man. We appreciate it. Hey, we appreciate you guys. We're honored. You know, I think uh, kind of started off one of the most exciting things for us is as a veteran-owned and operated company, uh, <laughs> having, uh, having uh, Armed Forces Radio Network join us and be able to listen to broadcasts is pretty important to us. And, you know, anything we can do to improve the quality of life for our, you know, brothers and sisters and families and contractors out there, it's a... Uh, it's a big point for our company, and uh, you know, we're honored to be on the show, but it really uh, means a lot that they're able to listen in tonight as well. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, so what uh, what branch of the military were you in? Army. You're in the Army. Okay. I was going to guess the, the jujitsu kick-in, butt-kick-in <laughs> something. See, it's still Team 6. Yeah, yeah. We can't talk about it, though. Yeah, well, we would. Well, I don't know. Nowadays, it seems like everybody that served... Uh, Likes to come out and talk about it and make movies and books. I'm not one for that, but uh, I did my part, we'll say. But uh, let's just let's uh, you know enjoy the enjoy the the movies and stories and shows about it. But hey, we do have some bad dudes and bad ladies out there in the in our armed forces for sure. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, absolutely. They um, <clears throat> like I say every week, they're built to do something that uh, that I'm not built to do. And touche. Uh, and uh, and we appreciate everything I'm they do for us. I got bad knees. <laughs> uh, but you know what? If I was on SEAL Team Six, my Adderall's kind of wearing off, so I apologize. <laughs> like I would have killed Bin Laden. You know what I would have done? You would have wrote a book and made a movie. Well, I would have done that too. But like, I think we should. Well, I better not even say it. it's probably. It'll probably get out. Yeah, yeah. maybe listening. we should just maybe we should just move on. Anyways, I would have killed Bin Laden. Actually, I would have. Uh, okay. I'm an excellent shot. Are you? Um, my brother. Oh, we'll get in the, the the subject of my brother, but he's a I mean, crack shot. I'm okay. Like I'm okay. Like anything within a hundred yards, you're pretty much toast. But a hundred yards with a rifle is really nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. I, I haven't fired. A, I haven't fired a rifle in a long time. I used to when I was when I was younger. My dad did a lot of. My dad was in the Air Force and he did a lot of, of hunting and things. Uh, man, I haven't I haven't gone hunting since I don't know, like I was twelve. I think it was the last time that uh, that we went. Uh, did a lot more fishing than hunting as mm -hmm. as, uh, as I grew up. But we kind of got off topic, like right off the bat. Robert, I got a question. Oh, for me? No, not you. Oh, that would have been weird. No. <laughs> oh, there's two Roberts. Yeah. On the topic. I just, <laughs> I, I just made I just made that connection. Go ahead. Yeah, I, that's why I said Robert, not Rob. Mm -hmm. Jerk. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So, question. Tell us. Let's get back on topic because Rob's completely derailing us, talking about guns and stuff. Uh, tell us about Southern Draw because it's the first time you've ever been on the show. You're a fairly new brand on the market. I mean, you've been around for a while, but um, starting to pick up some traction. Tell us what Southern Draw is all about. For us, you know, it's uh, it's it's about quality of life. I think uh, you know, I had the pleasure. of Smoking my first cigar of the day, actually, I got out of the military, which was July 5th, 1995. And I had a, a command sergeant major that handed me a, a wave elf. And he said, listen, brother, you're back. You're alive. You served. 
let's celebrate, let's have a stick. And I oh, I enjoyed it to a point that I had never been a drinker, I've never been a cigar, a cigarette smoker, never been a dipper, even though I was raised in Texas. You never um, dipped? Never, absolutely never. You're missing and out. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but what I enjoyed was that we sat down and we had a good conversation, and it, it was just downtime. And uh, I said, you know, as long as I'm above ground, I think I'm going to try to enjoy a cigar every day. You know, for me, it started out, you know, after my military career in the telecom space, and I traveled around quite a bit, uh, both across the U.S. and globally. Um, but I had the luxury of moving down to the Caribbean, Latin America, Central American market, and I got to spend about six straight years down there. And uh, kind of the common theme in, in those cultures, if you've been there, if the sun's up, people are working. If the sun's going down, they're done working, right? But uh, I got to meet a lot of the families in the cigar industry. I got to meet them not at the professional level, but at the social level. Um, but I found myself at the end of every day having a cigar, having a little drink, and, you know, having traffic clear out, and then, then going back to the hotel or my house, depending where I was. But, um, you know, because I fell in love with the culture, when I came back to the States, you know, my wife uh, was introduced to it. We've been together uh, 19 years, and uh, you hear me talk a lot about her if you follow our social media. I mean, she's an integral part of the company. We'll talk about that later, but uh, she didn't really feel welcome. She, she felt like some of the conversation, uh, some of the – Advertising some things are a little bit edgy for our, our kind of our conservative brand. So break it down. What is Southern Draw? Southern Draw is a collaboration of cultures that uh, is part Southern hospitality. You know, Southern, we have a very conservative approach to things. Um, our desire to kind of slow down, enjoy, and be social. Not just friendly, but truly be social. Um, this started out as Southern Draw, you could imagine, you know. But uh, we dropped the L, and in the R side of it, the draw side of it is um, really that collaboration with with the cigar factories, um, with our you know tobacco growers and our partners. Um, they've got generations of experience, and for us, we want to make sure objectively we're producing kind of the that made from scratch mentality, that real simple uh, Southern style where everything's made from scratch but done well. Um, so. Blending two cultures, you know, the, the, the Southern culture along with the, the known uh, quality uh, of, of our partners in the industry that have come way before us and learned a lot more than I'll ever know about this business. But that's where the idea started, was just blending those cultures together. Okay. Rob, this is where you step in because I'm <laughs> processing the answer here. You asked the question. I was waiting for you to keep following no, up. No, I was... Uh, <clears throat> so... I mean, so, so Southern Draw, you guys have been around a little over a year now, right? At least as far That's as I, I'm, I'm as I, far as I'm aware. You got three, uh, three cigars on the market: um, the Firethorn, <laughs> the Kudzu. Uh, uh, Kudzu was which what I'm smoking, the Box Press Kudzu. And what was it? The other one's Quick Draw, right? Quick Draw. That's correct. It, and actually, the Quick Draw is a line of cigars we'll build on that are going to be all petite. We try to keep them in the five to six dollar range, you know, thirty minute smokes. But that quick draw today is available in actually two unique blends: uh, the Pennsylvania Broadleaf and the uh, Ecuadorian Dark Habano. So there's there's two different ones when you when you get those and get a chance to smoke them. Uh, they're they're very unique, uh, different blends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so actually four blends. Okay, so yeah, I've uh, <clears throat> I smoked the Firethorn on an episode of our pairing show, um, about a month ago. And uh, smoking the like I said the kudzu right now, and I'm about halfway through, and this thing starts out with a bunch of spice. It is it's a spicy spicy cigar. Uh, about halfway through, the spice is calming down a little bit, and uh, it's got some nice flavor to it. I, I like the I like the box press. I, I I come around on box press. I feel like a lot of the cigars that I gravitate toward are box press. You, Logan, you're shaking your head. Mm -mm. Not a big fan of the box press, huh? People just screw it up too much. <laughs> I mean, no, a, it, I mean it, honestly. It's a keen observation. I, I do believe that if you smoke enough of them, you'll identify which factories that you feel uh, produce a box press cigar that you know, burns at the right rate, burn temperature, and flavor profile. Um, you know, our particular factory, we won't spend a lot of time on the factory part, but which is AJ, done a right? great job. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, but this cigar that you're smoking, the Kudzu, um, it uh, it has some extremely aged Escudero wrapper, and the veins were quite uh, heavy and pronounced on them. And I, the box press really smoothed it out and made it a 
really nice, soft, you know, texture and made it uniform. I think if you smoke that in a round cigar, Rob, um, you're going to see a lot of flavor uh, that kind of pops periodically because all those sugars are concentrated in those veins. But once we box pressed, it just made it so beautiful and it burned so uniform, and uh, it's been a, it's been a real real hit for us. It's done well. It's it's got a smooth a smooth feel to it. The the the, the the texture of the smoke is really smooth. Nice. Um, the uh, the flavor profile it's getting more and more rich as uh, as the cigar progresses. Like I said, that spice is kind of dying away. I'm getting more rich, kind of earthy tones. A little bit of almost like a rich oaky kind of flavor in there. Really, really nice. A little sweetness on the end too. Um, definitely enjoying this one. So I'm gonna go ahead. We've got some. We're gonna be giving some of these away later. Um, we'll get a. <coughs> Logan, you have a mute button. Um, I would rather not use it. <laughs> we'll do some giveaways for the AFRN listeners as well. So if you guys are listening, I'll keep tuning in until the end of the show, and we'll let you know how you guys can uh, enter to win uh, some of these great cigars. I'm going to jump in. We've got a bunch of audience questions, and Logan, you feel free to chime in. Uh, All right, whatever. You know, whenever you like. Cause that's, no, that's I got cool. I got a question. Oh, well, uh, it's, too, it's too late. I already clicked on Shooter's question. Okay, well. It's too late. you got to wait. Uh, so this is a question from Shooter. Shooter is uh, one of... Well, he was the member of the year last year, right? Shooter is member of the year every year by yeah. heart. Yeah, like he's, he's yeah. We we all have we, he, Logan and I actually got shooter tattoos. I did uh, when Left we were at PCPR last year, uh, and we we can't show them to you guys, but we we got them. Yeah, um, and it's and and uh, I'll be honest, Shooter's not a very good looking guy, so it's a tough tattoo to have. But uh, it no. looks like a cuddly bear. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Shooter's a great guy. Um, <laughs> well, I keep derailing the show, man. I know it's uh, okay. all you. It's not. No, it's it's uh, we've roll reversal today. Uh-huh. Uh, so let's see. Shooter wants to know. He says, uh, after reading your website, it sounds like uh, you've spared no expense to provide a superior cigar, uh, yet you don't pass that expense onto the customer. So he's curious. I'm going to paraphrase his question here a little bit. How are you guys able to do that? I mean, to take a cigar. And you... How are you making money? Yeah, in essence. I mean, that's kind of the. That's how are you able to make such a a premium product and keep the pricing uh, as reasonable as you guys have been able to do? Um, it's, a, it's a keen question. I actually appreciate him asking that question. Um, I didn't really think the website conveyed that we're not trying to say we're using the best, but we're using the best available, right? I mean, we really are. Um, the good thing is, although we've been around 18 months, right? You made a point of that, Rob. Um, we've been in this process for about... <laughs> And we made a lot of mistakes, and the, the the luxury of mistakes is we also got to watch other boutique brands come up and, you know, look at the industry, full keystone, everybody wants to make 100%, I get it. Um, and we felt like that would stall out the brand and the growth. So um, the gist of it is, instead of getting keystone, we, we automatically discounted this about 25 30% before we put it on the market. Um, you know, our core lines, the Firethorn and Kudzu are – very expensive cigars to make and produce. Our margins are very low. Um, and the quick draw was really meant as an introductory cigar, a 30-minute $5 cigar, which has done well for us. But uh, we just we, we just took a haircut. I mean, that's just as simple as it's put. Uh, I like we, it. we dropped it about 25 to 30%, and I think it was the, the right thing for us to do. And our hope is uh, over time, you know, um, working with the brick and mortars and working with the media association together, we'll build enough of a following that, you know, we can ex- experience the volume versus uh, versus just trying to uh, get 100% or get keystone every time we sell a stick. makes it a little bit tough for, for boutiques, and I don't want to be one of those here today, gone tomorrow guys, but, you know, we've also, on the flip side, got to be prepared to, to uh, spend some money every month to kind of subsidize that until we get to, uh, uh, you know, a certain uh, level amount of retailers, right? So we've got to do it in volume more than uh, more than just uh, right up front. So it's a great question. I appreciate it, but that's the short of it. We just uh, we took a haircut on it to try to uh, establish a brand and build some following and make it affordable for folks. So what's the price point that these cigars uh, are, are available at? Well, the core line is really the two blends that we mentioned, the Kudzu, which is the uh, Habano Escuro, uh, and the Firethorn, which is a Habano Rosado. Um, both of those come in Robusto Toro Gordo, and that's the only three Vitolas today for those. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously we're in Texas, so the taxes kind of fluctuate from here to there. But uh, uh, we try to stay between uh, 8 and $10 on those three Vitolas. Um, 
20 count boxes and bundles. I think we're one of the few um, boutiques that have offered bundles and even samplers, two pack and five pack. Uh, we did invest quite a bit into the uh, you know four millimeter UV bags with Bovita. All of our boxes and bundles come with Bovita. We just can't spare an expense of providing a quality product. And then the uh, quick draw that we mentioned, um, that's that's right in that five dollar wheelhouse. You know that petite Corona. We're going to expand that line. We're looking at releasing Petit Lancero soon on those blends. Um, it's a nice introductory cigar, but we try to keep it in that five dollar price point. Interesting. Yeah, it's to find anything nowadays that's that's a good cigar that's under ten bucks. Um, I mean, it's that's not tough. that hard. It's it's getting well. It, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I feel like it's it's either getting tougher to do. I, I don't know. It, it kind of. It's, I don't tobacco know. prices have shot through the roof in the last that's, two years. Tobacco prices have like tripled. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. I feel like a couple of years ago, the, those five and six dollar cigars were easier to find. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? They're still yeah. out there. They're still out there, but um, I don't know. It's it's just inflation and like you said, the, the price of tobacco and price of land and everything in, in Nicaragua and things like that. It's all, land. it's all skyrocketed. So it's uh, called inflation. I got a question. <laughs> Uh, not for you, uh, for other guy, uh, other Rob. Um, so here's the here's a question. This is completely off, not off topic, but I like to ask questions that are you know not necessarily um, not necessarily related to scars, but just so people can get to know you personally. It's something I've been doing the last I don't know week. My question is, tell me about the who is the most famous person that you know that smoked your cigar, or that you've personally smoked a cigar with. And not someone in the industry, so you can't say like industry. Christian. Um, not somebody in the industry. Um, if it's outside the industry, you know, I guess famous for one is not famous for the other. Uh, we've got our good friends at the the coaches Charlie Strong and Jay Norvell at University of Texas that have now opted that uh, Kudzu is their cigar, and I think you'll see if you follow them on Twitter, you'll see them post a, a nice Guinness and a, a Kudzu at the end of a game, win, lose, or draw. Um, on that side, you know, uh, we've shared our blends early on with, you know, Prime Minister of Jamaica and things of that nature just because we've had, you know, relationships over the years that we've run in together. Uh, but, you know, really we've kept it pretty close to the industry. And, you know, I, I get to go to a lot of shops. You guys get to experience it. But to expand on the answer, uh, you know, today I was in a shop in Dallas and, you know, uh, Hinky Kellner was in for an event, and they said, man, he smoked that Pennsylvania broadleaf and said, I want to buy a box of those right now. And that's as important to me, whether it's objective or subjective. And Steve Socker made this point to me one time, and I, I know he made it to you guys one time on the show. You shouldn't you shouldn't care what other people think about the blend. And and I, while I understand that, I do care. <laughs> I did blend them. They're my blends. Uh, obviously, I collaborated, you know, once I selected tobaccos, but, you know, from a famous standpoint, when people like him and people like uh, uh, Nestor Miranda and people like Eric Espinosa will reach out and support us as a little unknown company and say, I like your quality, your product, I like your brand, and I'll help you. To me, they're famous. They're In my world, they're famous to me whether they're inside the industry or out. Because right. they've offered to assist us without any potential return. There's nothing in the world I can do to help those people, but yet they've offered to put their hands around us and carry us. So uh, they're famous to me. <laughs> okay. No, that's a good answer. I mean... I, I I love Sokka to death, but Sokka is one of those guys that he doesn't give a f about nothing or nobody, <laughs> right, and, right. and he's just a robot. So hey, yes, brother, he probably doesn't brother, care. When I say look at it objectively, he he I, he I, subjectively that's a whole another two or three shows, right? But objectively, oh, I'm going to ask people who've been around it and seen it because I want to make sure. And now I have no doubt about our factory and our team. I'm we're blessed to be a little company. But I'm going to expand on that answer one more time, Logan, and this is why. A few weeks ago, I was sitting in a shop that I'm sitting in right now, having a cigar, and my phone rang. <laughs> and it was um, Engelbert Humperdinck. Somebody had given him one of our cigars. Is, this, so this is that guy real? There's a famous guy for you. I mean, he's I've heard the name, guy. but like I thought that was like fake, like Mary Poppins. Hey, baby, that's a famous guy. I still got 45 uh, uh, vinyl for that guy, but... He uh, had somebody passing one in Vegas a few weeks ago and had his manager call, and I thought he was lying to me that it was him. And ended up, uh, he wanted quite a few cigars, and he shared them out with his buddies. And he, he's, uh, he's, he's been a pretty good fan since, but it was, uh, it was a great experience. You get a That's cool. 
calling me and goes, do you even know who I am? I said, yeah, when I want to end the conversation or go to sleep or I'm playing shuffleboard, I put your music on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's the best answer. You should have went with that one. Should have led with that one. <laughs> Engelberg Hupperdick. I got to Google. Rob, you go. Oh, you got to Google him now? Yeah. Um, all right, just to let our audience know you're listening to Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, we're here with uh, Robert from Southern Draw Cigars. He's telling us some pretty good stories. Uh, this uh, next segment brought to you by uh, Fratello Cigars and um, <clears throat> talking about the new uh, Fratello Boxer uh, inspired by a very simple box that molds a very complex cigar. The Fratello Boxer series was born from the very exciting flavor profile of its father, the Fratello Boxer. Uh, ask for it at your local tobacconist and press the flavor. So check out those new uh, the new Fratello Boxer series. Um, I think those just those have those hit the market yet, Logan? No, they should. I know the Sigfed store is getting a bunch. Okay, yeah. So I know you guys can look for those pretty soon, uh, coming in the next few weeks. So um, I'm going to jump in with a couple more audience questions here. Um, we've got a few of them, and I'm just sifting through. Uh, this is one thing I wanted to talk about, which is why I said we featured the uh, the Firethorn um, on our uh, pairing show. On your website, you guys list different pairings for uh, for each of those or for for those two blends. I'm not sure if you do it for the quick draw. I haven't looked. We do. Um, okay, so yeah, so you, and I'm looking like for example, I'm smoking the the kudzu, and I always go straight to the craft beer part. And you recommend IPA porter stout, which those are IPA porters and stouts are very different. Uh, brown ale sours. I have never been able to pair a sour with a cigar. I've never really tried actually. It just doesn't sound like it would be very good. Um, uh, box and lambics, um, and I think that you're right on board with those uh, with the first three. Um, I don't drink a lot of brown ales, but I'm gonna have to come around on that. But I can definitely see. And you were mentioning that uh, uh, that uh, your friends smoke this with a, with a Guinness. I could see that pairing being really really nice. That spice um, would uh, offset that the creaminess that you get from the Guinness. But um, <clears throat> to get back to Jason's question here. I says it's. Uh, it thinks it's great that you include uh, beverage pairings for each cigar on your website. Uh, what are some of your favorite pairings with your cigars? What are some of the things that you like to pair with? Well, let's start with morning because every 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 day when the sun comes up, um, a uh, a nice bl- spicy bloody mary, maybe a couple a couple of thick cut slices of crispy bacon and some romaine lettuce, side of toast, right? We call that a BLT bloody mary, with a nice quick draw dark habano. It's a beautiful start to the day. Um, there's a lot of folks that drink, uh, you know, lighter spirits that are usually mixed. It's it's good with that with that quick draw line because of the subtleness. It's it's a complex little cigar, but it's subtle enough that it uh, it, it complements without uh, overpowering any you know lighter spirit, uh, specifically vodka and gin and, and, and even the lighter rums. That's one. Um, for me, the uh, the kudzu is really about a refinement. It, it, it really pairs well. I'm a scotch drinker, but because I'm in Nicaragua quite a bit, absolutely love barrel-aged rums from pretty much all countries. There's somebody that does it well everywhere. Um, the longer that they're aging and fermenting uh, a, uh, a, a, a spirit, or in this case, a beer. Let's look at a stout or, uh, or a porter, for example. When they're finishing these beers in uh, sherry casks and finishing these in port casks, they have such complexity of flavors. Um, the Habano Rosado in the Oma Tapi in this, this cigar has been aged very aggressively, and we don't get into the details, but very aggressively so that it's not as strong as one would think, but it's got more complexity to it. So it pairs very well when you get into that 12-year, 15-year, 18-year on your spirits and your and your uh, longer barrel-aged craft beers. Beautiful. Now, the Firethorn, um, it, it can be two different cigars for people. You had it with a pumpkin ale, which... Uh, I appreciate you guys. My wife ran out and uh, bought pumpkin ale and uh, put it in the refrigerator so her and her friends could have a little uh, firethorn pairing because that's her cigar. Um, it's a cigar that is a medium cigar when you're just smoking it, but anybody that retrohales uh, a cigar, you're going to start picking up more of that San Andreas binder. It's going to have a little spicy uh, profile to it. Um, I tend to I tend to smoke it more, um, you know, when I'm sipping a nice rum or, or sipping a nice añejo tequila, mm-hmm. um, 
but it's a very versatile cigar, which I found because there's there's a there's a some filler in there that has some nice dried citrus notes to it. So you have folks that like to drink uh, what we call poo foo drinks, right? Maybe uh, just a <laughs> standard old screwdriver, um, anything like a, anything that has a citrus note to it, a mojito, uh, anything that's using uh, a mint or a spice. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, it, it just pairs extremely well with it. So it's it's been a it's it's been a great thing to test. Now, I will say something about the, the pairing notes. You know, we were blessed again to have good friends, especially in California, that uh, have been craft brewers for some time and have been winemakers for some time, have been distillers. And as a, as a guy blending cigars, when, when you bring these guys in on the blending phase, when you've selected eight or nine different tobaccos and you're trying to figure out a few fillers and tweak the blend a little bit, having these unique palates come in that really want to do one thing, our goal originally wasn't just to blend good cigars and everybody hopefully will, you know, catch on. Our goal was to really promote and market and support local family-owned breweries, wineries, and distilleries and to create an experience by pairing these that neither one of them alone can achieve, if that makes sense. Um, now, I think for the lack of marketing advertising dollars, we haven't been able to push that to the level we should. We've seen other companies kind of jump on board and, you know, craft series and these things, more power to them. They certainly have the name to do it. But we have an objective to do this. And over time, I think you'll see us continue to pair with these smaller breweries and distilleries and really um, isolate a pairing that people can just reach for at their local, you know, Specs or Twin or, or uh, you know, Total Wine and give them something where we can cross-market and support their family business as well. So we want to do beyond just talking about it. We actually want to do it and promote it together. That's very cool. Um you know, listening to you talk about <clears throat> pairing the Firethorn, I had two very specific drinks pop into my head, uh, and they're both bourbon-based. Uh, Old Fashioned, because you get that little bit of orange in there, and uh, Mint Julep, with uh, you get some of that mint spice in there. Those are two of my favorite drinks. I'm When it comes to cocktails, I am very, very classic. Uh, my wife likes to get weird and put basil and uh, rosemary and all kinds of weird stuff in there, and it can be fun, but... Uh, uh, I think those two cocktails. We might have to do another pairing show with that because that sounds like those would uh, those would work. The, the old fashioned is a, a great reference, and if Logan's not busy uh, on the 14th, you ought to get in the car with me from Austin and drive down to San Antonio. We're doing a we're doing an event at Mams down there, and uh, we're bringing in a local Spicewood, Texas brewery called Solid Rock, where we've worked together with them on some of their brewing and and you know when you look at the selection of malt, uh, malt and hops and things, looking at how we could uh, have a nice pairing, but Always when we go down there, Gary Garza puts together the best old fashioned I've ever had, and it, uh, it's one of those where at three o'clock in the morning you're still sipping on another one and you're still smoking another cigar, going, "This has got to end sometime," but I don't want to. <laughs> but I, I, at some point, we got to get you guys together with us to do that because the old fashioned is you're right on the money with that, bro. That sounds like a trip that I would enjoy, and Logan uh, would be our designated driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't let Logan get around the uh, around. He doesn't like beer and he doesn't get to get around. The, yeah, it's the not booze. that I don't like beer. I just don't like. I, mean, I was in a fraternity in college. I drank a lot, but I just have a drunk. That, that doesn't know. mean you like beer. <laughs> I don't like beer. I'd rather drink like rum and cokes. Like I'm like Frank the Tank. You just do not want to see me come out. Don't let him out. He's a bad, bad man. No, no, we uh, we definitely don't let him out. But uh, yeah, no, that's that sounds great. And that would and, really end the double doghouse real good. Yeah, <laughs> if I got all Chuck Murphy tonight. Yeah, it's Chuck Murphy. That's it. That's it. That's gotta be. We, there's gotta be a cigar that comes out that's called Chuck Murphy. <sighs> the only thing though, somebody's gotta make it a, Chuck be a great name. It's kind of like Tiger or Kitty Soft Paws. I mean, like some of these things <laughs> I spew are just marketing gold. And it's just nobody ever uses it. I don't know why. People just keep ignoring you. It's People just crazy. keep ignoring me. Yeah, I exactly. I don't understand it either. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling through some of these questions here. Uh, let's see. Let's see who we got. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you got a question? I got a question. All right, go ahead. So, I'll scroll through these. Um, so how do you know the Jamaican prime minister? Well, you said you spent a lot of time in the South. I'm assuming Central America or the um, Caribbean. What were you doing? Were you like a diplomat? Were you, you know, no, SEAL Team Six? Nothing exciting like that. Nothing exciting like that. Um, <laughs> no, I actually uh, I was building a uh, wireless <laughs> network throughout the islands and throughout uh, uh, South America, um, and I had a home base office in Jamaica and one in Trinidad, so that I could travel between uh, each of the islands and countries almost daily. 
when you're building a network. Um, and you know, obviously, with with business ventures, there you got to have counsel and representation. And when you're doing with dealing in a business that has uh, re federal regulation, which is telecom, it's like dealing with the FCC. You got to go see the ministers, and you got to uh, um, you got to get the licenses, and usually that takes uh, uh, some kind of gifts. You got some money in the coffers, brother. You got to contribute a little something to the cause. <laughs> and in God, my, other uh, countries are awesome. The cars are just a gateway to it, but uh, my the attorney that I used for quite some time actually became prime minister of Jamaica for a good period of time. Well, that's cool. That's a good story. I like that. And by the way, just so you know, Engelberg Humperdinck was actually born in 1936 in Chennai, India, where I spend a lot of time, which is really? ironic. Yeah. That is ironic. He's British. Huh. Of all, of all places. If it wasn't the world of uh, uh, Google and Wikipedia, we, should, we, would have had a, we would have had a question of where he was born, and we would have gave a nice prize. But it's, it's easy to Google him, I guess. Yeah, Google, Logan, Logan blew it. Yeah, Google is legit. It's, it's kind of scary how easily you can track down information these days. <laughs> Um, i got a question here. This was asked by uh, a couple of guys, and I'll just pick Stefan's. Uh, Charlie asked this question as well. We don't ask Charlie's question. Uh, we don't. We tend to skip them. Um, <clears throat> they want to know what made you choose uh, Tabacalera Fernandez. Um, divine intervention. No, and there may be divine intervention there. Let's just say this. When, when we decided to be in the business, and I say we, my wife and I, um, you know, I've explored... Um, certain blends that I was working on, and you know, you go with the early relationships you have, and it really pushed me to the Dominican. Um, but Dominican for me, as I came back to the U.S., was a much more difficult place to get to from Austin, Texas, than Nicaragua. And then I really enjoyed Nicaraguan tobaccos. I liked the aromas, and I liked the flavors, and I thought I'll go try to Nicaragua before I make a decision to launch the line. Um, so we went to Nicaragua, and uh, we made it. A valiant effort with a factory, and for whatever reason, um, whether it was quality or consistency, or maybe my lack of direction, I don't know. I, maybe I wasn't sure at the time. We didn't launch the line about three and a half years ago, um, and then it's basically consultation with AJ. I was sitting with him and said, "AJ, here is my problem, and uh, my problem is here's my first here's my first blend of this. Here's my first run, and here's the production run that I'm supposed to release, and I." They're not same. They're not the same. They're not consistent. The quality's not there, and you know, typical AJ fashion. And and I'm not riding his coattails. I'm actually praising the guy. He's he's a genius to take a, a cigar apart and to tell me where every tobacco came from and the age of every tobacco. It's pretty impressive. Um, but basically, my plight was: here's this guy from the U.S. that's trying to start a new brand and. Um, you know, I think we've got some pretty good blends that we might need a little tweaking on. But more importantly, we need somebody that we can trust, that we can look at the long term. And I think with AJ, he says if exclusivity in the long term is important because if he's going to help build a brand and he's going to put resources, valuable resources, this is a very busy man. Um, I just, I told him I'm not going to go make a cigar with Company X, Company Y, and Company Z. I'm looking for a home, and I'm not looking to make a change. And you know, uh, the other factor was. He's a young guy that has a lot of experience, but he has so much in front of him that I looked at it and said, there's a lot of choices out there, but this guy seems to be making huge strides, huge progress, but he's young enough that he's going to outlive me, and he may even outlive my own son, right, which our hopes is someday, you know, the kid's 15, I'm talking like he's 30, but he's 15, but, you know, AJ will be there, and, and he's just so integral in everyday operation that just impressed the hell out of him, and the guy really impressed me. Um, and I just felt like, here's this guy that's willing to work with me, and good Lord sent him, and what else can I ask for, right? So um, I just, I thought it was, it was, it just felt right. Yeah, I mean, it's, AJ is, <clears throat> I mean, AJ really taught me how to, how to love Nicaraguan tobacco. When, uh, when I look back at some of the cigars that I smoked when I first started, uh, it's all AJ stuff. Um, I think so, everyone starts with AJ. Oh, yeah, I mean, well, everybody. more. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the guys who were on Cigar Federation, and uh, you know, they all started around the same time that we did, and and got their information from the same places that we did, and um, so yeah, I mean, as far as somebody that you'd want to work with, it seems like working with AJ would be a dream. Um, but when when you talked, when you mentioned earlier that you you guys didn't want to just be one of those companies that shows up and then disappears, I mean, everybody says that, and of course you you want your company to be around, but you're talking about 
you know, after you're gone and, and leaving it to your son and everything. I mean, you, you mean it. This is this is long term for you guys. Yeah, this I mean, this is a long term, you know, commitment. But most importantly, in, in next month will be 19 years I've been with my wife. For the first 16 years, I didn't listen to words she said. Um, <laughs> How'd that turn out for you? <laughs> Brother, I'm about to tell you. Because I know I'm in the same boat right now, and it's been almost five. It, it's it's double dog houses for I'm going to be humbled enough to just to just to shoot you guys straight in the audience straight because it's not a bunch of rich guys sitting around all the time that are got a few coins and want their name on a label and you know a cigar brand. That's not what it's all about. Let me tell you something. I flew through corporate America and I made the money and I wore the suit and tie and I was the youngest guy and you know Fortune 500 companies. I did it. But coming out of that, I surrounded myself by people I thought were going to benefit my business and my future and return to investors. And I tell you what, next thing you know, you surround yourself by people that are fraudsters and scamsters. And no matter what, it's my fault, my responsibility. But my wife sniffed it out like a bloodhound all those years, and I just kept ignoring her. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we just have to listen. So, uh, you know, to, to, to not to get too biblical, but I use this term a lot, and it's, it's because it's me. I'm talking about myself. Um he who exalts himself will be humbled. You want to talk about being humbled, my friends? Robert was put on his knees. Everything that I ever had was taken. But what we decided is as we move forward, we're going to do it together. And the thing is, when you do something together where you're both contributing and you both make a decision and then the passion is shared, um, we have to look at that in the long term. It's, this is not a short-term venture. And that's just the mentality. And I know everybody says it. But the other side is the little things that we can do, for our blends and for our brand is we can make sure we have enough tobaccos now to roll cigars for the next several years so the blends don't change. We can make sure that we're buying good tobaccos and it's being fermented exactly the same, being aged exactly the same, being rolled exactly the same. There are things that we've been able to watch others struggle with that we're not encountering uh, and part of the luxury is, is the partners that we have but um, we just have a, a little better thumb on the pulse, if that makes sense. So we're able to commit in the long term. We're not looking at option B or option C. Um, and we're, we're just not those wealthy people that just want our name on a cigar. As a matter of fact, you'll see, you, you won't see my name on a cigar. I, maybe it's because Holt Cigars was already taken, right? Yeah, that trademark, <laughs> I'm sure, was taken. <laughs> but, uh, but no, we're, we're, we're in it to win it. And uh, we, we realize, you know, something that you guys have talked about on the show a few times. And you ask me if I could talk for an hour, I can talk for an hour. <laughs> uh, we don't have a pedigree. Um, we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, uh, reference points for 20 or 30 years or two or three generations, but we do have a strong brand from, a, from the onset, but we do have a good collaboration of partners that are very trustworthy, very admired people. And we've got our own spin and our own field, but they're supporting us. They're not asking us to change for them. And I tell you what, um, it, it, it's paved the way. We've got a pretty solid foundation with the partners that we've got and the retailers that we have and the love that we're getting from the media association and everyone else. I mean, we don't deserve it. We haven't earned our keep yet. So we just look at it as a blessing. But it's, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, it's pretty cool to do it together and that other people see us doing it together and they seem to enjoy it as well. It's true, man. The wife's got a good nose for for scamsters. Well, I should have listened a long time ago. We wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Well. I would, this is more fun, man. If I could smoke cigars and fly fish for a living like Terry Johnson or Terry Gallagher, I think I'd be okay. Yeah. I always forget old T.L. Johnson. He we haven't had cigars. Terry on the show in a while. I know. I know. But I always forget that he does fly fishing stuff, and he has all rods and reels and all that crap. One of these days, I'm gonna have to have him teach me how to do it because that's that's no, one of those. It's that, impossible. No, it's man, it, it, we're not meant to fly fish. <laughs> I don't know, me. man. That that just looks. There's something that's so appealing to it's me. It's sexy. It's just standing out in the middle of a, a river that's kind of you know just running and you're just just out there winging it. Yeah, I mean, I've, it's not I've that done, easy. I've done some fishing, uh, but I've never fly fished before. Well, don't because you're gonna get a hook upside your ear. You're gonna get your line all tangled. You're gonna fall in a sinkhole when you get out there. Trust me, dude. It's 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 it sounds awesome. I have a funny story that I want to tell right now, but I don't know if we have time about fly fishing. We can, we can do it in the, uh, in the okay. after dark segment. It's a freaking uh, great story it's, about it's, my we've, wife. We've still got a bunch. We've got a bunch of audience questions. We're not gonna okay. get through all of them. Uh, there was one here that I just wanted to pick up, and I, oh, this is a good question uh, from Stefan, and it's a reference to. I mean, you guys sell direct on your website. And he's curious, how do you how do you manage that while keeping the 
your B and M accounts happy? Because I can see we've had people talk about that in the past, where there's that can cause some issues. So I'm just curious, how do you guys manage that that uh, that topic? That's a, again a great question. I appreciate it. Um, two schools of thought here. You can look at our website. We have samplers and our hats and our paraphernalia on there. Um, you can go to it right now and pull it up. The website was created for us to get samples in the hands in the markets where we don't have brick and mortars. Um, you see that we promote from the very first button you push on our website to our retailer list, which we were very aggressive on. You see that our social media is about every shop we go to. Um, we get Facebook messages, we get Instagrams, we get people asking for cigars all the time. And we do push them to the closest retailer to them. And if they don't have it, we push them to somebody else that actually has the you know full boxes, if you will. Um, that website is is a valuable tool for us, but more importantly, the the yield from it is all about getting samples and samplers in the hands of new brick and mortars or new media association members, people that will go to the website and visit it. It's not about uh, having an online store. We don't have the capacity uh, from a manpower to run an online store. Um, and at some point, we hope that we won't have to have that anymore. Because it's uh, it's more of a burden financially than it is uh, than it is a reward for us. But it's all about giving access to samples, and uh, you know we've got you know a little representation in a, you know 30 states, but it's really in the South right now. And and, and you know over time you, we see Oklahoma, I mean Ohio and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and you know everybody's calling about samplers. And it's easier for us instead of answering the phone calls, just let them buy a two pack or a five pack and see if they like it. And what they usually do. They go to their local brick and mortar, share a stick, tell the story, and start asking for it, and then we're able to send them samples. But that's really the intent of it. And we've taken some flack. And I know there's shops that we haven't gotten into because we have any presence, but we do a great job of supporting our brick and mortars and, and promoting them. And, uh, you know, it, maybe the perception is other people before us and other people after us have abused that and, and uh, you know, have, haven't played fair by the rules, but we are. We're playing by the rules. And, uh, you know, it's a daily reference where customers would call me and ask me for a box. We'll send them to a store. I mean, we're, we're we're just not we're not there to take any any money out of pockets of our brick and mortars because that's our lifeblood. You know. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing you mentioned it while you were uh, while you were talking there. Your social media, you and and every time that we've spoken, you've been like, oh well, I'm on I'm on my way to this place. I'm going to be over here. I mean, you guys are in a shop. It seems like every day, and you're always posting photos and stuff from them. So that's that's actually pretty cool that you guys do that. Well, I wasn't a social media guy until it was a necessity. Um, but I tell you what, uh, going to the shops, not only sharing the pictures with the staff and the customers, but it also gives me a record of where we've been and when's the last time I've been there instead of me having <laughs> so, You know, Robert takes a lot of pictures, but listen, guys, we don't have a lot of staff. It's not like I have a social media person that handles it, right? So until we get uh, uh, a supermodel or uh, or uh, or a, a Todd Vance with perfect hair doing social media for us, you're stuck looking at me every day. <laughs> well, Logan, you'll you'll do some modeling, right? I I will definitely. Yeah, tasteful got, nudes. Tasteful nudes. I, I can do some tasteful nudes. I, I've been complimented uh, that I have very wonderfully sexy calves. So <laughs> I got. I'll check with the boss lady, but I think we have an opening for two left-handed models, hand hand models. I'm not sure we have any calf model. Opening. My hands are pretty crusty, uh, <laughs> so probably not uh, hand model. But if you want to put the cigar on the calf and like, yeah, I'll totally rage on that. <laughs> that's 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 not how you sell cigars. No, that's. that's uh, well, has anyone tried? I don't know. Another great <laughs> idea. They're just they're just, just gems. You just plant seeds and they grow. Hey, but listen, Rob, <laughs> listen. mixed and mash versus dinks with drinks. Come on, bro. <laughs> I tried to push it, Logan's talking. Logan's talking about a website that I do with my wife, and um, that was Dinks with Drinks was the, uh, the the title that he suggested. Dual income, no kids. Yeah, no, I pushed Drink it. Amazing. I, I pushed for it. I pushed for it. But that so, would have been in the stratosphere. Yeah, no, absolutely. Imagine nobody gets it. <laughs> uh, guys, you're listening to Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in, taking some time out of your day to hang out with us. Uh, we're chatting with Robert from uh, Southern Draw Cigars. Um, talking about Logan's cabs for some reason. Um, I'm going to move on to some of these uh, audience questions here. Another one from Jason Myers. And he's curious, uh, what made you decide to go with um, with Bovita? I mean, you guys, you have Bovita in, in everything that you guys have, that you offer. I mean, you even put them in your boxes, right? Yes, sir. And, and the samplers. 
and, this, and the samplers are in those uh, the, the Bovita packs. So he's just curious what made you uh, decide to go with Bovita. Because um, we, we did actually have Bovita on the show. Uh, and I grilled him. Did you? I, I wasn't here for that nah, show. You here. I wasn't here for it. I gave him a hard time. <laughs> gave him Bovita a hard time. That's, that's uh, not very nice. The short wow. of it for us is um, we've used pretty much every solution out there. I mean, I've been smoking cigars for 20 years, right? Um, and I've had problems. And when I started using Bovita myself, um, hey, listen, this isn't a big fancy company. We got Igladors, right? Everybody else got the big fancy stand ups, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, JD at Toasted Foot, and what's in your humidor, right? And uh, he's, everybody's talking about all their home uh, 4,000 count LED, you know, climate controlled storage. Brother, I got Igladors, but uh, Bovita Igladors. worked well for us. I like that. So we knew we wanted to release some samplers, right? We wanted to be able to do two and five pack. We wanted something that had some UV protection, but we started with Bovita, and we would test them over six, eight, 12 months, and they just worked well. And uh, um, if it's good enough for uh, somebody like Puente, it's good enough for Southern Draw, my friend. So uh, <laughs> they, they supported us well. They, they treated us like we were you know, a large OEM customer. And uh, um, again, it's one of those when they treat you well and it's a good product, it's hard to go anywhere else. Uh, so we just made a commitment. If that's a sign of quality, um, we've got people that live uh, in, 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 in on military bases in California that are in a desert or Afghanistan. We want to make sure that they're getting a good product. So um, for us, it's just, you know, a little quality control that we could do. It's a few cents to put in a box, a bundle, or a sampler. And, uh, you know, no matter what happens with FedEx, UPS, U, UPS USPS, or VHL, you're going to get a product that's probably not dry. So uh, it's just preventive maintenance in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I always think when, <clears throat> whenever I see something like that, if it comes in the box or you, you comes in the sampler like that, that always that tells me that that's that's a company that really cares about their product. I agree. So, you know, but what the most like scary thing is, I'm not going to say which manufacturer. And it was not Southern Draw. I recently got a box of cigars, and they are a a Bovetta or however you say it, authorized retailer. And the two humidity packs that were in the box, actually the one that was in the box, was completely dry. So that is almost, for me, a bigger negative. I was like, dude, if this thing was dry, what kind of shape are these cigars in? So it's all, but if I wouldn't have had, I would have had no idea because I had to put them in my humidor and let them set for a couple weeks and smoke them. So it's almost a double-edged sword, I think. You're kind of Russian roulette in it. Well, you That's know. That's my, my humble opinion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good observation, but, you know, over time, what what everybody will realize is maybe they put an eight or a ten gram in there, and they needed a twelve or a sixteen. You know, it, 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 every tobacco is different. Cello, not cello box, laminated box, you know, bundle. Everything's different. You really got to go through the trial and error. So if all you do is go buy something and throw it in a box, you're going to probably find some that are too moist and some that are going to dry up. And you're going to get a little crispy packet in there that looked like you know a dried sugar packet. But uh, it took us about a year to get through the testing to see what size of Bovita we needed in there. And I won't lie to you, we had some crispy critters, you know, and it was an arc stock and it was okay. Um, the scars were fine, but but no, you don't want to get the crispy critter when you open the box because it says a lot. Uh, it, it suggests a lot. It's very, right? yeah. They, my suggestion is they really need to do trial and error, not just, don't just read the uh, manufacturer's uh, recommend, recommended dosage, right? You really got to decide for yourself what the best solution for that particular package is because every package is different. We, had, we just had to upgrade. You know, we went from our, on our five packs. We, we didn't want a six-month shelf life. I want a, I want a nine-month, 12-month, so we went to a 12-gram, and it's just working brilliantly. So uh, they've got the right solution. You just have to choose the right solution. I'm curious. Dude, your little one-liners are great, dude. <laughs> like, I've picked up a bunch. He's, he, yeah, he's dropped some good ones. That's and that good. is very rare for someone to out-one-line me. <laughs> Logan, what do we got? About 10 minutes left? Uh, yeah. Go. Uh, let's go through a few more of these questions here. This one's from Ryan Brown. Uh, now, uh, Ryan Brown asked a question. Uh, that's a new name. I don't recognize that. Okay. Um, and I'll paraphrase here a little bit. Now, you guys have a box press, and you have the round roll of Parejo, which I always feel like I say that wrong. Um, which do you prefer, and why? Um, the, between the Firethorn and the Kudzu, you know, I'm very partial to Kudzu because it was Robert's first blend, and I, I certainly appreciate the cl collaboration where we tweaked it, and I love a more medium-bodied, full-flavored cigar. But I'll tell you this, that Firethorn has grown 
economy because the Firethorn is one of those cigars that just gets better with age. The Habano Rosado and the San Andreas really just, they continue to evolve. Um, so the first part of the answer would be Kudzu is my favorite. I gravitate toward it. I love it. I love the box press because I can put it down anywhere and it doesn't fall off. I don't know if you guys sit on your patios much, but I do. Uh, I've dropped a lot of cigars, but um, over time, that Firethorn, brother, it's uh, it's 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 taken over my palate because it's a very complex little cigar that just seems to get better, it's like a you know like a like a classic car. It just keeps getting better, and, and to me, it's becoming more valuable. I appreciate the question, though. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm definitely enjoying this uh, this kudzu. Um, I'm about just about down to the band here, and that spice that was. Uh, I'm I'm sensitive to uh, to a spicy cigar for whatever reason. I don't, I'm sensitive to it on the retro hill, and uh, so maybe it's not quite as spicy for someone else as it is for me. Uh, but that really kind of calmed down in the middle, and it's it's settled into a nice, rich profile that's really really enjoyable. Um, I'm looking forward to sitting down and smoking this and really focusing on it and, uh, and working on a review. But this is a pretty good cigar, man. Um, that Firethorn, I really have to smoke again because, like you said, we were pairing it with. Uh, with pumpkin ales, and I, I caught your little jab about pumpkin ales too. Where you said, "Oh well, my wife bought some, and she has her friends over, and they enjoy it." There's some pretty good pumpkin ales out there. Man. There's, there's some good. Hey, only reason some... I didn't, it wasn't a jab. I uh, I put myself on the wagon for the last month, so I haven't been trying to get over a bug. But uh, uh, mark my word, before the November gets here, my birthday's in a couple weeks. I am going to have some pumpkin ale, and I'm going to try that fire thorn uh, with it. And uh, uh, matter of fact, I might fall off the wagon next week. Uh, and, and try it, but it wasn't a jab at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it should have been. I love it. Well, no, there's there's the, there's that uh, that stigma on pumpkin spice everything, and I'm not a big pumpkin spice guy, uh, but uh, and I actually don't really like pumpkin ales at all um, until we did a, a show uh, last year, and I had a few of them. But uh, I've had a few this year, and I, I don't know if uh, Elysian Brewing is something that's down near you, but their great pumpkin is really really good. It's an imperial pumpkin ale, so it's uh, I think it's 8.5%, um, but it is it's quite good. And uh, there's one from Southern Tier, I think the Pumpkin, I think is supposed to be very good. I haven't had that one either, but um, that's supposed to be very good. But there's some good ones out there. There's some really bad ones too, though. Oh. Um, anyway, but I digress. Um, let's I got see. A question. If you Go could ahead. smoke a cigar with anyone, dead or alive, past or present, who would it be and why? I could be funny and I'd say Gandhi, but that's not going to fly. Um, hey, well, Ingeborg Humperdinck was from India too. You guys could just chill out there in Madras. Around in his jammies, either, you know. But dude, uh, that's legit. You know, it, it would be very, very simple for me I, if I could sit down with any anybody. It would have, it would probably have been Churchill. You know why the guy lived life to the fullest and put himself in some pretty uh, sticky situations, but at the end. We all think about who smoked the most cigar. Who, what guy has smoked more cigars than anybody? I got to think he's a pretty good cat. So I think I'd sit down with Churchill, and we probably wouldn't talk politics or uh, or military strategy, but maybe talk about cigars a little bit. So that, that, that'd be the first thing I'll come off the top of my top of my head. Okay. So that that actually leads into a question from our, our very own Matt Ross. Oh wow. Um, he wants to know what would your your desert island cigar would be. So if you're sitting down with Churchill and you're smoking a cigar. What would you be smoking? And it can't be your, it can't be one of your blends. It has to be something else. What would you be smoking with them? Um, it, it can't be one of my blends. It would be uh, uh, Alejandro. Can't be Cuban either. Don Alejandro. Okay. Why? My first and my favorite uh, Cuban cigar. What the family Rabina stood for. Um, their story, their history, but the cigars are just damn good. So uh, that would that would be it. I would feel like we're doing something. What if it's non-Cuban? Uh, non-Cuban, a um, little more difficult for me, uh, but uh, I'd probably reach over there and grab Espinosa's La Ranch just because he's a cool cat, and it's a, it's a great medium-profile cigar with some nice flavor that no matter what the guy sitting across from me like, he would, if he was a Connecticut guy, he'd enjoy it, but if he was a Maduro guy, he'd probably enjoy it too. So... It's much, it's much more enjoyable when both guys enjoy the stick. So uh, that's probably what I'd reach for. Okay. That, that's a pretty good cigar. That's all right. That is a pretty good cigar. Um, but Eric, on the other hand, is awesome. <laughs> that's right, bro. That's right. <laughs> Eric is a lot of fun if, if, you, get, uh, if you get a chance. If you can handle his personality. Uh, yeah, he can be, he's over the top, man. 
He doesn't. But I can handle it. He's he's a lot of fun. He is a lot of fun. I, I know we're we're getting right up against it here, Logan. Right? I think. Oh uh, yeah, we got like two minutes. Um, okay, well that's uh, that's probably going to be it for the audience questions. I don't think we have anything that's got a real short answer in it. Um, yeah, so, one minute. oh, one minute. So, Robert, I appreciate you hanging out, man. This I told you this this hour goes by so much faster than uh, than we ever anticipate. Um, but let everybody know where they can find you. You guys are really active on social media. Um, and that was how I found about it, found out about you guys was on Instagram. I would see. Uh, Southern Draw everywhere on Instagram. So let everybody know where they can find you online um, and uh, get some information about your cigars. Let me do that before our uh, Armed Forces Radio Network uh, group fall off. I think that's what's about to happen. Uh, yep. This is the Cigar Federation uh, 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 exclusive. Um, Southern Draw has just begun shipping to the uh, military exchanges, uh, AFES, and we have about 150 military posts that just received our cigars. So a lot of our friends uh, right now, CONUS in the United States, pretty much every base has those, and they should start looking for those in the bases. Promotional reasons, we're not allowed to uh, put locations and things and links. Wish we could, but we can't. But um, certainly uh, those are there for them, and we're going to support and be doing events uh, on the posts with MWR and other folks. So for the AFRN you know, listeners, that's key. Um, SouthernDrawCigars.com. Um, Facebook is Southern Draw Cigars, Instagram and Twitter are both SD Cigars. As Rob noted, we're very active. If you go to our website, um, you will see an active list of retailers by state. Um, you'll notice that we have a big presence in the South, but we're moving our way. We've, we've got 30 states right now that we have product in. So um, with your help uh, and, and, and you know our, our hardworking sales team, we'll continue to expand it. But um, most importantly, no matter where you are, um, you can send me an email or, or a message on any of the social media, and I'll tell you where the closest person or closest location to get them if, uh, if, you, if you're not uh, one of those guys like me that when I travel, I look for the shops I'm going to even before I get on the plane. So uh, southerndrawcigars.com, we, we appreciate everything. Absolutely, and for the AFRN listeners, uh, we've got some cigars we're going to give away. So email me, rob, at cigarfederation.com, and in the subject line put uh, Southern Draw Cigars AFRN. And uh, we'll pick a few winners. Let me know where I can ship these cigars to you, uh, and how to get them in your hands, and uh, and we'll send some of those out. So we'll pick. Logan, them. we'll send those out. Yeah, Logan, yeah, I say we. Um, I'll I'll sift through all the info, and then I'll make sure that Logan gets them sent out. So make sure Rob at CigarFederation.com with uh, Southern Draw AFRN in the subject line. We'll pick uh, five or six people we can send some out to. Uh, Robert, really do appreciate it, man. Had a lot of fun chatting with you, and uh, look forward to everything you guys are going to do in the future. Appreciate you, Rob, Logan, the entire Cigar Federation, all the listeners. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to share a little bit of uh, uh, Southern Draw with you, and we look forward to sharing some sticks together here in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Uh, everybody have a great weekend, and stay safe. Motherfucking bitches, bitches, bitches. <laughs> This is Logan's favorite part of the That's show. That's my only favorite part of the show. That's your favorite part. I, I, I feel like we might have gone over our uh, 58 minutes there. Uh, we did, but hey. We Cause, can, you just got to fucking deal with it. John can trim it down. Yeah, John. John's good at that kind of thing. Um, so, technique bullshit. So I've actually, like, I've done all the work, and I already picked all the winners of, uh, of the live winners. We've got five live winners tonight. And I'm just going to go ahead and announce those because I know everybody's waiting on them. And then we can uh, we'll chat for a few more minutes. Oh, uh, before you announce them, yeah, I'll go ahead. Oh yeah, we'll make everybody wait. Yeah, make them wait, freaking pricks. Uh, I want to tell the funny story about fly fishing. Mm. This is a great story. So my wife and I were up in British Columbia, and for a work trip that I had won or whatever or God, I guess, and it was right in British Columbia in Vancouver, up in the mountains, uh, right after the Winter Olympics that were there. It was the Based the Winter Olympics were going to be in the winter. We were there during the summer. And let me just say, it's still fucking cold up there uh, during the summer. It gets like 30 degrees at night. Well, one of the activities you could take was fly fishing. And we're like, oh, yeah, this will be so fun. Well, basically, we get there, and our our uh, our guide, and I use the term guide loosely, uh, <laughs> was a bartender in Vancouver who had got done working at 2 in the morning and drove up to... Uh, the Whistler Lodge uh, on Whistler Mountain, and we went fishing. Well, first of all, water is like glacier fed, so it's like probably 35 degrees. I mean, it's a tad chilly, and basically you wade out, right? Well, Allie, it was just a mess. 
like, I mean, Allie was getting the lion caught in her hair and all this. Well, anyway, she went back to the shore, and as she was walking back to kind of the bank, she fell in. Or not oh. fell in, but kind of went under the water. Well, with waders, they're watertight, right? But if you get water inside your waders, it, it's watertight still. Like, so you've got water in your waders. So basically, she had to strip down, was freezing. And the best part, if you know my wife, which none of you really do, but... <sighs> So basically, the the guide had made the mistake of telling her about a black panther that they had been seeing <laughs> in the woods that had apparently drug a baby into the woods and <laughs> ate it, which he was totally fucking with her. And I knew he was fucking with her, but Allie started hearing crunching sounds in the woods. So my wife, me and the guide turned around, and my wife is half naked, streaking across this path back to the car in the parking lot to get away from this mysterious black panther. That That's famous Vancouver Black Panther. Black Panther in <laughs> Vancouver. <laughs> well, I know. Catch fish? Huh? I, I caught one trout, <laughs> and then as we were going to take a picture, the stupid guy dropped the fish. Oh. Well, Complete that, asshole. That, that happens. That's and the worst part. He's a bartender than he is a fisherman. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the other thing it was ironic is we get back and other groups had went out with other guides. They were like, man, we caught like 20 fucking fish. I'm like, where did you go? They're like, yeah, we were inner tubing down some river and fishing off our raft. We were catching all these fucking fish. And I'm like, what? That sounds awesome. Yeah, and that's like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, how did you catch? Do. I go, well, technically like half a fish because it got away. And they're like, oh. And we just stood in the same. Dude, it was miserable. You guys got the wrong guy. We did. We totally got the wrong guy. And fly fishing is fucking impossible. <laughs> Robert, you're, you're a fly fisherman? Yes, sir. So are, do, you, do you offer lessons at all? Or? Um, it'd be like giving you lessons in actual cigar rolling, but um, <laughs> I can get it out there. No, I, I, I can fish pretty well. Um, but if anybody watches me do anything in the world and says he was my coach, they're probably going to get laughed at. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I know people. My people get a hold of your people. But yeah. I'll tell you this, hopefully things continue to go well, and at some point we can do a little uh, – we can do a little southern draw retreat and go catch some fish. I'll introduce you to some of the, you know, the Rocky Mountain rivers. But uh, I've got some favorites. But our kind of fishing, we're not going to go wading, Logan. We get in a drift boat. The guy rows us down. We smoke That's what I'm talking about. We, we, we drink, stop at lunch, have a nice bottle of wine, have a little cookout. We catch fish, but it's we're smoking cigars. Get off the river, you light a fire, and you have some more cigars. But uh, uh, you know, Nestor Miranda is one of, and Terry and uh, Terry Johnson are about the only other guys I know that can smoke a cigar while casting a fly and actually catch fish and not burn their line. Um, and that's a talent. That's a true talent. But we can do it. You know what? Uh, it's a way of life. But uh, it's not as hard as it looks when you get in the boat. Waiting's a whole different animal. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It just something about it just looks so peaceful. Uh, it, I mean, it's frustrating. You know, watch watch river runs through it while you're sitting on your patio smoking a cigar, and by the time the movie's over, you'll be pretty good. <laughs> okay, fair Technically, enough. you'll be pretty good fly fisherman. <laughs> fair enough. All right, I've I've seen that, but I've, I've never. I was I wasn't. Maybe I'll take notes next time. That's what I'll do. My, yeah, my brother remember. my brother in law fly fishes, and he he ties his own flies and everything like yeah, that. That's so uh, horrible. I should have him teach me. But uh, the best fishing. The, what's that? I said the best place to fish, and the best type of fish. And it's easy if you ever want to go fish. Is Central Missouri on Sherman Lake when the crappie are spawning? Fish in a fucking barrel. <laughs> they're just fucking. everywhere. I mean, dude, you go out to one of the pads where they're breeding, and like you throw a lure. I mean, you could literally throw like a piece of wood in there with a hook on it, and they'd fucking bite it. It's awesome. I, I don't know. I, I, that doesn't sound like much of a challenge, though. Yeah, but when you're listen, listen, when you're reeling in the fish, that's all the fun. That's the best part. So why wait? Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, for me, uh, fishing for me I, is like uh, like Robert was saying. It's more of it's not just catching the fish. It's the, it's the whole the whole ritual. I guess is the right term for it. You know, you just out. It's I get to be outside in nature and just kind of find my find my center or whatever you want to call it. It's a very Zen thing for me. Um, but anyway, before I start waxing uh, too poetic, uh, let me pick these winners here. And they're all going to email you, Logan. I'm not going to deal with these emails. That's fine. I don't give a fuck. So email Logan at Cigar Federation. You guys know the drill. Include uh, all of your mailing information. So if you don't, you don't win shit. Well, most of these guys have won before. I don't so. give a fuck. So they, so they know. Um, 
But uh, Ryan Brown, we're gonna we're picking He's Ryan good. Brown as a winner. He hasn't won before. Rob Levine as a winner as well. He had a couple of questions that I've we actually we uh, we referenced. Uh, I think we answered his questions without actually asking them. So uh, Rob asked some good questions. Uh, Jason Myers, Stefan, and Shooter are all of our winners for tonight. And then we'll do uh, some podcast winners. Podcast winners are going to email me. If you're listening on the podcast, email Rob at Cigar Federation uh, with Southern Draw Podcast in there, and we'll pick um, three or four podcast winners as well. And you know the drill. Send all your information. Uh, appreciate the podcast listeners. We have podcast listeners all over the globe. Apparently, we have a bigger podcast following than originally expected. Yeah, I mean, like, from all over all over the world, like Finland, we have people listening from Iceland and all kinds of crazy places. John can tell you. He, he lists all these places. He's Germany. been working on the podcast quite a bit. Germany. We have a lot of listeners in Germany, too. Um, so, for all those places. Although, I don't know that Logan can ship to those places, but we'll do our best. Uh, um, listen, I'll ship anywhere to any country. I don't care. But if you're internationally, that means your tobacco laws probably suck. And if your package gets stopped at the border, do not come whining to me because <laughs> I'm not responsible. But I will send them. But if they don't get there, whatever, that's that's uh, you take that up. That's between you and the postman and God. And I will declare your cigars as bagars. Okay. That's Fair my – because I don't put, you don't want to put cigars on the package, but you don't want to put candlesticks. So you write in really scribbly English, bagars. Mm-hmm. And cool. ask John. That's, it works. That's, that's good enough for me. Um, so let's – yeah, I told Robert we'd have him here for about 70 minutes, and that's where we are. Um Robert, I appreciate you, man, uh, hanging out. It was a lot of fun chatting with you. I, 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 I like your attitude and the way that you're kind of approaching um, this business. That uh, it's, it's a tough business to, uh, to get a foothold in, and uh, I wish you guys all the best. Hey, we appreciate you guys. We can't do without everybody. Like I said, it takes a village to raise Southern Draw. We're, we're mindful of it, but, uh, uh, you know, wise man once said to me, he said, you want to get in this business, just be prepared to lose twenty or thousand a month for about two years, and then maybe you'll see something. So, you know, our expectations uh, are, are, are in line with that. But uh, it's good. We'll, we'll continue to do things. Enjoy your cigars. If you need anything, you let us know. Anything we can do to help out. And if you need more giveaway stuff, we'll be glad to get it in the hands of more folks. But thank you both. Appreciate what all your work, all, all the effort it takes for you guys to put on your show and and to run your site because that takes a heck of a lot of work. Well, thanks. Yeah, we uh, we we work hard and we've got our uh, a group of guys here. That we got minions with us. But yeah, we've got have minions. <laughs> yeah, they, and they do. And and we've we've been lucky enough to build a, a pretty good community of uh, of no, followers that, that uh, spend a lot of time on the site and uh, real generous guys. They they take care of each other. So really good community. So hopefully you can spend some time with some of those guys too. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in. You can find us at cigarfederation.com. We will be back next week, Logan with. I don't know. Uh, Cubaraqueño cigars. Oh yeah, with uh, with uh, Juan Cancel and Bill Ives. That's gonna be a lot of fun, um, and they'll hopefully teach Logan how to say uh, Cubaraqueño. I feel like I'm saying it right. Uh, uh, I know. We're every every time Juan says it, he just he says it so fast that I can't. Cubaraqueño, you, you you nailed it. I'm, I'm I'll, I'll close. smoke a protocol next Thursday right about your show time. I'll fit right in. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be fun. Uh, so we'll look forward to uh, chatting with you guys next week. Again, Robert, appreciate it. Um, you can find us at CigarFederation.com. Everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys at Cigar Federation. Good evening. Later, monkeys. Yeah.